Well, greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. We're getting a little back on track on the, this podcast, where we're finally we're going back and reviewing a movie. In this case, the new release, Warm Bodies, directed by Jonathan Levine, a relative newcomer to the Hollywood scene. He hasn't directed anything else that I've seen. Um, according to his IMDb page, he's... he's other well-known movie is uh, Fifty Fifty, which I didn't see, so I can't comment on. Um, the wacky, uh, the wackness, and all the boys love Mandy Lane. The rest are uh, documentaries, TV series, are short films. So he's a relatively new director, and you can see he got a restricted budget. Uh, so it's good to see. I always like to comment when we had new directors on here. He seems to do some decent work here. And as for the movie itself, a lot of people were going, oh, it's it's Twilight with Zombies. It's not Twilight with Zombies. It's only in that it has... This is why people said it's Twilight with Zombies, because it's a horror creature that's in a love story. And apparently every film that's like that is now a Twilight ripoff. Now, this has got a very different uh, feel... For you know, a disciplined feel, Levine definitely goes in a direction away from Twilight. Uh, I mean, it's still, I think, going after a bit of the same audience. Don't get me wrong there. I think certainly they are taking advantage of Twilight in order to get seats in the theater, which eh, uh, I think especially with uh, the promotions and such, I think they've, they have cultivated a bit of that on purpose, but it's certainly a different film. It's certainly got a better soundtrack. It's actually, the film's got one of the most enjoyable soundtracks I've seen in uh, in a while. Not an original score, obviously, but the actual like, soundtrack. They've got plenty of classic songs in there. It's, if you like music, it's not a bad film. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the film looks alright, and it's it's more along the lines of a it's trying to go for like kind of a teen comedy feel, but it never goes quite into that full blown comedy era. I think I think the film wanted to be funnier than it was, but it was restricted. I think there was a bit of a how should we put it? Not knowing where we wanted to go with that. And that might be due to its adaptation. Apparently this was originally uh from a book or a novel written by Isaac Marion, which was then adapted. I have not read the book, I not even a synopsis, so I don't know if maybe part of this tone was uh, from that. Maybe maybe the book was a lot funnier. Mm. Sorry, still have my you know, ultra-large cherry Coke from uh, AMC there. But it, it, it strays a line, like it wants to be funny, it's got a few parts that are like, <laughs> you get a little laugh, but it never got into the full comedy. I was kind of expecting that. So if you're going in expecting a comedy, you're going to be disappointed. It's it maybe you could argue as a romantic comedy. It's an interesting film to say the least. It's doesn't succeed in any direction, and I think for some people it's going to be forgettable. I think the only thing that the most memorable thing about it of course is the premise. It's a zombie film from the perspective of the zombies. And they do a few creative things with this. They, uh, I like how they explained in the movie why why zombies like brains or want to eat brains, and you know it, it's always in every other zombie movie. It's just they want to eat it. In this one, they kind of get into that, and it's the fact that when like does at least in this movie, when the zombies eat the brains, they get like memories of the people they're eating, and it makes them feel human. So instead of being some just like incessant need to feed, it's actually they want to eat the brains to feel more alive. So it gives a different take on that whole thing, or a reason. And I guess it kind of goes to show that, you know, ironically, it humanizes the zombies that way. Kind of a weird thing to put. Uh, of course, there's also that they, yeah, just they have a more traditional zombie group as well. They have like the skeletons, as they call them, or bonies, whatever you want to refer to them as, because the movie has like ten thousand nicknames for everybody. But there's you still you've seen them in the trailer. They're, they're like they're kind of skeletal, more skeleton. Like apparently it's like when a zombie like really just doesn't give a 
stuck. They kind of sit there and then eventually wind up like tearing off their own skin and become this bony creature that apparently is. I mean, we're told this that when the zombie just completely gives up, gives up faith in being human, they they become a bony or a skeleton. And then it's those ones, I guess, that fully embrace their zombieism that most are really do not want to be you know when they're when some of these always get to be cured they really don't want to have that happen and so they are most ferocious in bringing down our protagonist it's interesting and it's a nice it's like how they put it. i mean really the subtext of the movie is about human connection uh, how we need human connection to be human and it really kind of puts it like once I kind of it's kind of weird to think then how did the the zombie virus spread if all you need to become cured is to just hang out with humans and be accepted by them and all of a sudden you'll become human I mean it's a nice little subtle message it's obvious you can argue you know the story is actually talking about something else. It's talking about the human condition, which is it's just fine. It doesn't bother my suspension of disbelief. It, it it sets itself up in that way. So, I'm sure some people will complain about that, but and it's not an invalid argument to make, you know. But but I was able to suspend my disbelief with that, so it passed by that test, you know. Every film, if you pick it apart, is going to fall apart when you start asking a lot of questions. Real life falls apart when you start asking questions, but it, because it actually happened, you just have to accept it. As a wonderful post, somebody just, what I like to call the counter troll. Yeah, you know, basically put World War II and nitpicked it as if it was a movie using facts. So I was like, you know, how is this Winston Churchill guy running the country now when the last time there was a war he was a completely incompetent person, got all those Australians killed in in uh in Gallipoli. Nah, I'm digressing into suspension of disbelief, but back to the film. Uh the only problem I had at first, like, it's kind of obvious that our main character, who's named R, we never found out his original name, is, uh, he's got, like, his own little, like, hangout in a, in an airplane. Because apparently, like, the, the, his, like, home zone is the airport, and he's got this one particular airplane he, like, sets up stuff in. So it's already sets. You know, if, if they maybe establish that, like, he or somebody else had been hiding out in this place beforehand, and he just kind of occasionally goes in there and wanders it because he he likes it, or for some reason, I kind of might have bought that. But uh, this this like it's only like one scene when they start this off, where apparently as a zombie he like he not only walks up the uh, the stairs into this plane, opens the door, which is kind of complicated. Which you don't want to. I, I guess these are the type of zombies that can do that. And then kind of like puts on a record, sits in like the chair, or kind of listens to it. Even like does hits the little button to make it go into recline. Again, if they kind of like had it with, uh, with I don't know, maybe if this was in the airport itself, and like a little back store that he kind of just he like there was a jukebox and he presses the button and plays the music. I would have bought it a little bit more. I don't know. It's he seems a little too human from the from the start with that. It's it's fine. You I, I kind of just chalk it up and go, but eh, that might irk some people. Uh, what else to talk? Oh, of course. And then we have uh, Rod Cordry in this, who um, not as funny as he could have been, but he's still an enjoyable. It's still enjoyable to see that guy. He's basically the other main zombie character who I guess is he actually must be even more human than our main character because he does. He just takes him seeing them and he kind of starts becoming human at a much faster rate without having all the prompting. He's kind of fun. I, he's got, again, the funniest line. Like, he, like, as he's, like, 
becoming more human, one of the things he's saying to R after Julia, uh, Teresa Palmer's character, uh, kind of leaves R to go back to her city. He's like, bitches, man. Bitches be crazy, or something along those lines. It was probably that's the funniest line of the movie. I didn't laugh that much at it. I was like, it was pro. It was a genuinely funny line. The way he delivers it, because he's got to deliver it as like the zombies kind of struggle to talk, and it's always kind of low whisper type talk. He's like, bitches be crazy. Eh. <laughs> he was enjoyable. Who else we had in there? Uh, Angela Tipton as uh, the best friend, who is quite much more willing to accept uh, R. First, it's again like you have Julia and R, the main characters, and it take a while for her to get used to him. But like everyone else, all the zombies turn a lot faster than R turns, and like characters like Nora, who is Tipton's character, you know, become much more accepting of R faster than anyone else. Uh, you had Dave Franco as kind of the old boyfriend who who our main character literally eats the brains of. And that's how he kind of starts getting an attachment to uh, Julie. Hmm. And then, of course, we also got John Malkovich is playing basically the leader of the humans, kind of the militant leader, who's kind of got, like, the zombies set up down. Like, somehow they constructed this giant wall and have, like, a city... It's very Land of the Dead. In some ways, you might say this is actually a better story of what Malkovich, or not Malkovich, uh, Romero, wanted to do with the whole uh, Land of the Dead setup. This is a little bit of a better setup. Of, like, humans kind of accepting... Like, they had that weird thing at the end in Land of the Dead where, like, the, the zombies are becoming a little bit smarter. I think this one took that ideal and actually made it Work. Oh, they're not only becoming smart; they're slowly becoming human. And then they, 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 towards the end, you know, as all the zombies become more human-like, they wind up joining with the humans eventually and fight the skeletons who refuse to become human, refuse to give up their zombiness. Yay! Ah, it works. If you're into like, how should I put this? I know not a lot of family, the zombie fans are going to like this, and, you know, I consider myself a zombie fan, and, uh, it's an enjoyable film, it's a fine, it's a passable movie, I'd still watch Hell of the Living Dead over this, but, it's a fine, and at least it's a different addition to the zombie genre, and I'm one of those people that do critic, pardon me, who do criticize the zombie genre right now for being kind of getting, having gotten gotten stale. Like, I'm kind of saying right now, I've said it before, but, you know, I think after World War Z, I think that's should, I think the zombies have kind of run their course. We've been over in a day. The only, and I, the only reason I gave World War Z an excuse is it looks like it's doing something a little different. It's showing the scale. You know, it's finally giving us an epic zombie movie, which is something we normally don't get. And it's all about the actual zombie apocalypse. Here, it's doing something different, although apparently one or two, like, independent films have kind of done this, where we get the zombie perspective, we kind of get the ideal of Romero, the zombies changing into something else. In this case, they change back to being human. Everyone kind of learns how to be human again. Which is nice. Yay, because we get to see Rob Corddry kind of become human again. It's kind of weird, like, how they show, like, people... The zombies kind of get really quickly reintegrated into this populace. And here's... This I will grant you as a nitpick. And I think this is what you're going to see people on the internet. Especially on the more, you know, nerd-centric forums like Space Battles and such. Is that apparently the uh, this plague has happened for eight years. So these characters, first off, don't feel like they've had the situation for eight years. If you said it was like one, maybe two years... They've been kind of living like this. I would buy it more. Cause, or maybe it's just the fact that Julie's character is this. You don't buy that she's they've she's been through this giant apocalypse. She seems too much like a modern teenager, and you expect after eight years of this happening, it would so change how she would have her outlook on life. You kind of, she's kind of that rebellion just for no apparent reason rebellious. That. 
I just never buy. You know, no one ever really, really goes through that phase in in the high school and their teenage years the way that it's depicted. Yeah, you get your belly to do stupid stuff, but you still... It's never like how it is in the movies. And yet we still have that character archetype. Like, she even kind of, like, says, oh, he changed. Like, I don't... He blocks stuff out. No, she's referring to that, or, like, her old boyfriend. I'm like, no, he's just being actual practical. <laughs> he's... He's learned how this world works. And you kind of uh, get annoyed with her at that, because everyone's like... Because it shows the boyfriend is kind of not accepting her kind of rebellious purposely running out having laid-back fun, because, you know, his father's getting killed and eaten. He's kind of picking up... He's thinking of the population who... They kind of show that they're kind of a little bit on edge with, like, supplies running low and all that stuff. So you're kind of more sympathizing with the boyfriend than who the person you're supposed to be thinking, oh, has, she, he wasn't meant for her because he's, he's just getting kind of so cold and outside. And you're like, no, this guy is right. She's the one that needs to grow up. That's a minor annoyance that I had. But uh, yeah, back to the eight-year thing. It doesn't feel like eight years. Like, there's still apparently power. Because, like, the... Uh... Oh, God, what are those things that they have in the terminals? I don't know what you call them. The conveyor belts that, like, push you through. Those are still operating. He's, he's, you're still able to find stuff. It, like, if you said it was still a year, two years, you'd buy it more. Plus, I think... Huh, I think after eight years, the humans would be a little bit more stable. And the zombies would probably be a little bit more decayed. That's a nitpick, and I admit it. So, to conclude, uh, it's not a bad movie. For only uh, the reported production budget was only $30 million. It looks fine for a $30 million film. Um, you know, of course, they got CG, and it's, you know, I guess not concluding quite yet, because I should talk about it is a PG 13 zombie film. Yet they still are able to get a lot of stuff in there. Like, they show him, you know, our main character is eating brains. Like, literally, he's, like kind of has brains, he kind of eats them, and yet they still rated this thing for G13. Uh, which is kind of surprising. Like, they show him biting people and such. I guess they don't go overlo overload with the gore, and I'm sure there's some purists out there who complain about that, but... You know, it's okay. I didn't really notice it, notice it. Um, again, they really make a point with the zombies don't bleed. Or the dead don't bleed. I guess that's their excuse why there's not more blood. In reality, it's probably a little bit more realistic on how, you know, people don't... You don't shoot a person and then they have, like, super high blood pressure. We have gallons of blood flying out. And then the reason I bring that up is because they're doing World War Z. World War Z is uh, PG-13 as well, but I think you know, World War Z still gets away with it if they're going more for... It's not that they're doing this genre, but it's like cosmic horror, where you know, gore is good for the individual instance. Like, go, oh, oh, that's so bloody in that instant, it makes me curl. Uh, cosmic horror runs on the I feel so... This is so big, and I now am so insignificant is what the fear is. So, I, and with the giant crowds of zombies and such, I think that's what World War Z is probably going to go aiming at. This has obviously been made PG-13, so they can get the Twilight fans in there. You know, those young high schoolers. And, of course, the 12- and 13-year-olds who no one really checks if, you know, they'll just assume they're 13. But overall, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people that don't like this movie. I find it acceptable. It's all right. Uh, I don't know if... I, I'm probably not going to add it to my DVD collection. But, you know, if you're a zombie fan, you, you'll like this. Unless you're a gore hound. You're a true, true gore hound. And you've got to see the blood. You will get annoyed by the fact there's no blood. I went more for the story. And I believe you can do... There are some films whose purpose is to show incredible amounts of violence. But this film, I guess, is more about the story a bit. It's more about the romance. Um, now it's not about 
the actual zombie attacks or invasions or anything like that. So I didn't mind it. It, it didn't seem missing for me, but... Some people will probably have a problem with that. If you kind of just want a... Uh, if you... If your girlfriend wants to make you see a romantic comedy, take her to see this one, because it's, it's a... It'll fill the role. I guess that's my point in it, with that. Uh, it's not a Twilight ripoff. If you... There's... Oh, I'm trying to remember. There was a preview for... It, another movie based on a book, apparently, I forget, something Mortals, Mortal Instruments, I think, that you were just looking at it and going, this is such a Twilight ripoff. You know, it's like, Beautiful Creatures, that movie, complete Twilight ripoff, this not so much. So if that's your main concern, it's different, it, it's, it is a bit of, of its own animal, so it might be worth a look. There's not much more I could say about that, um... Will it do good? Bad? I don't know. I could have saw Bullet in the Head, true. I, I went to see this because it looked like it was doing something. Bullet in the Head, this looked like... Meh. Like, I'm sure it's probably an enjoyable film. Maybe I'll catch it. Uh, but this I went to go see this one this week just because it looked like it was trying to do something a little bit different with a, uh, a genre. Bullet in the Head looked like your standard action fair, which is fine. But I went with something different. Or looked different, I should say. So, with that all being said, uh, next week might not see a new movie. Maybe I will. I'm not sure. Uh, nothing really new being released looks interesting. Maybe I'll take a look at something that I missed. Yeah, I didn't see Bullet in the Head, so maybe I'll see Bullet in the Head next weekend. Uh, maybe I'll take a weekend off. Who knows? But, uh,. After that, you know, we got a good day to die hard. They have a lot of Bruce Willis stuff, aren't we? We've got that coming up. We've got uh, a G.I. Joe movie. So we got some interesting... Well, G.I. Joe is a little bit further out. But we got some interesting movies coming up. They're worth checking out. As for the channel news, not much to report. Uh, I'll probably do another one of those Counter Monkeys. We'll see how those going. Not, not getting a lot of hits, but I guess we'll see if they have long term. And I kind of enjoy talking about them, so you know, if you enjoy that type of stuff, check it out. Uh, video game reviews. Maybe I'll do a video game review next weekend. Uh, perhaps an old school one or something. Yeah, stay tuned. Find out. Please subscribe, like, all that regular stuff that people say at the end of their YouTube videos. Hasta luego. Signing out.